This is a lesson on responding to art. Using the art responses that are assigned every other week, um, I wanted to go through and just kind of walk you through the steps of how to respond. This is just an example, and as you guys um, who have already completed one and the first and second art responses, you know that the questions are different, the art pieces are different each week, um, but the idea is the same, okay? And so I'm gonna combine language arts with art and just make sure that you know how to respond to these to get the best score that you can. So I wanna look first at the assignment. So for week five, um, this was art response number three, and many of you have not completed this yet. Um, and unfortunately, after the video comes out, um, you will not, actually, you will not have access to the video until you've completed the assignment. So um, once you've completed your assignment, you'll have access to this and you'll be able to see um, what you did or should have done and what you could go back and correct. All right, so um, this was the assignment. So what I wanna do is look at breaking down the assignment, making sure that you understand what you were supposed to do, making sure that you're reading everything correctly, and then we're gonna walk through the steps of how to do that. So to begin with, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna look through, read through all of the instructions, okay? So I'm gonna do that together right now. So for week five, the Vincent Van Gogh art response, you're going to look at Van Gogh's painting, Cafe Terrace on the Place de Forum, Arles, 1988. And I think that's actually, um, I'm not sure that 1988 is the correct, I think it should actually be 1888. Answer all of the following questions in order to complete a complete paragraph of at least five to seven sentences. Number one question, what color scheme has he used in his painting? How do you know? Number two, what is your reaction to the use of this color scheme for the subject Van Gogh is painting, an outdoor cafe? Number three, do you feel his choice of color scheme makes sense for this scene? Why or why not? And explain. <clears throat> then there was a little added part um, down below the artwork on your um, assignment that said, Begin your response with a sentence to introduce the artist, Vincent Van Gogh, and the title, Cafe Terrace at Night. So, the first thing that we did was read the directions. Now I want you to go back and look at what exactly in the directions are you supposed to do. So the first thing that you have to do is look at something, okay? So you're gonna look at the painting, and we're gonna do that together in just a minute. The next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna answer all of the questions, okay? Now, another key words there, in order. So you're gonna answer them in order, and if you answer these in order, you're pretty much setting up your paragraph, okay? Um, and then we want to make sure that we create a complete paragraph. I have some students who've submitted just one line, or they made a comment, you know, like, I really don't like this painting. It reminds me of another painting that I don't like, or they gave me something just, um, you know, this is a really awesome piece of artwork. Um, and that is not a complete paragraph, okay? So first of all, make sure that you read all the instructions. A complete paragraph for this particular assignment was five to seven sentences. So that's what I was looking for, okay? Um, and you're, you're probably thinking, this is not language arts, this is art. This is critical thinking, okay? That is what we are working on. We are working to help you to see not just in art, but in stories or in life or in science. We want you to be able to think critically and then put your ideas together to make sense, okay? And, and any time you are writing a response, it needs to have a certain order. There are certain things that need to be in a complete paragraph if it is a standalone paragraph like this one. Now, if it's part of a story or if it's part of an essay, that's completely different. But when you're writing just a standalone paragraph, that means there's nothing else that's gonna go with it. It's just gonna stand alone by itself. It needs to be a complete paragraph, okay? It needs to address the topic, whatever your topic is. If there are questions, as in this case, the questions need to be answered. It needs to have five to seven sentences. It needs to have an, a topic sentence, a body, 
some body paragraphs with lots of details, and a closing. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to read through and answer all the questions. So the first thing that you want to do after you've read the questions is begin after you've looked at the painting, begin to answer those questions. So we're going to do that together. And then you always, 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 anytime you're writing about a piece of art, a song, a short story, a novel, anything, you always want to introduce the artist or the author and the title, okay? So that if that paragraph is taken out of context, like for example, if Miss Johnson takes your paragraph because it's so awesome and I want to share it with some other teachers, they're not going to know what the topic was, okay? So pretend that that paragraph is going to be pulled out and it's going to function just as a little piece of writing all by itself. You always want to introduce the artist that you're talking about and the title of the artwork that you're talking about so that your readers have an idea and they can go and look at it with you. So let's do this together. Let's go through and break down what is going on in this painting. Okay, so first of all, when you're talking about color scheme, the first thing that you need to do is look at what are the main colors that are used in this painting. What are the main colors? That simply means those colors that really jump off the page or those colors that are used the most. Now you're going to see other colors in here. For example, you may see a little bit of a red in here. You may see a little hint of what looks like green, but those of you who did your paint mixing know that this is actually a shade of yellow. Um, it is not green. Now this is this is more on the green side, but this could even be considered a shade of yellow as well because when you add black it kind of turns to an olivey green. Um, but if you look at this, that there are two major colors. And again, just a reminder, any color scheme that we've learned about can use those neutral colors of black, white, gray, or brown. So you're going to see some black that stands out. You're going to see some white. You're going to see some browns and grays on the cobblestone. But the two predominant colors that stand out are orange and blue. Now, when you answer this question, that is answering the how do you know question, okay? If you go back, if we go back to here when it says what color scheme has he used and how do you know, that answers that question for us, okay? Because he's used oranges and blues. So, what color scheme has been used? Well, how do you know? Well, we know that oranges and blues have been used, but how do you know what color scheme? Well, guess what? You just have to learn them. That's why I gave you guys the color scheme cheat sheet. All right? So a monochromatic, we know, is only going to have one color. Remember, mono means one and chroma means color. It's only going to have one color plus that color's tints and shades or lights and darks. Analogous. Those are going to be uh, colors that are next to or adjacent to each other on the color wheel. They are going to be side by side. So it doesn't have to be green and yellow and orange. It can be um, blue, green, and blue, and uh, blue, purple, um, or blue, violet. Any three to five that are side by side on the color wheel. Okay, now blue and orange, if you guys look at this, blue and orange are opposite of each other on the color wheel, right? We know it can't be analogous. We know it can't be monochromatic. What about triad? Well, triad, we know that the two that we've talked about are primary colors, blue, yellow, and red, or secondary colors, which are green, orange, and purple. Okay, and we don't have those, those, those aren't the main colors. Now, there are cool colors and there are warm colors. Okay. So I had a lot of students say he uses both warm and cool. Well, chances are if you see both warm and cool in a color scheme, it's probably going to be either triad or complementary. Okay, it, you you rarely you're not going to see um, a color scheme. Remember, we're looking for a one single color scheme, so it can't be both. So you have to look at what main colors are, and in, in our case, our main colors are blue, 
oops, let's go back. Oh, I went the wrong direction. Sorry about that. Um, well, our main colors are orange and blue. Okay, so blues and oranges. If those are our two colors, then we know that our color scheme has to be complementary. Okay. Now, you need to know these. You need to know, you need to study monochromatic. If you haven't taken the, um, the test or the quiz over color schemes, you definitely need to review this before you do that. Okay, so now let's look at this together. All right. The next question is, what is your reaction to the choice of color scheme? And I had some wonderful responses to this, you guys. When you look at and you think about what is the scene, okay? It's at night. It's a cafe um, with some outdoor seating. There are people outside. Um, there are people walking around. You can tell it's at night because the sky is dark. Um, it's, it's, a, it's not a light blue. It's more of a dark blue. We have lots of shadows. Um, and so if you think about what is going on in this scene, we have a night scene. So obviously the blue makes perfect sense, right? Because it's dark blues, okay? Um, we do have some light blues in here, but that's probably just the paint color. However, orange, because it's a warm color, is associated with light. So the orange that's, that we see in the windows, that represents the light that's on in those windows. We can tell it's nighttime because we have those lights shining in the window, but this is like the place that is inviting because it's so bright, it's lit. You can tell it's lit because of the use of those yellows and oranges, the yellow oranges. Um, and so th they contrast each other. So it's it makes it feel like it's a dark night but this place is really inviting and warm and it, it's a neat place to go to to get out of the darkness. Okay, so the, the goal here is to provide details and specifics from the artwork to respond to support your reaction once you've figured out what the color scheme is. What is your reaction to his use of this color scheme? Does it make sense that he would use complementary colors of blue and orange. Okay. Now, this is the key. This is the key. Let me back up because if you chose warm colors or warm and cool or analogous or any color scheme, if you give me good details from the artwork to, to back up your point of view, I'm going to give you credit for that, even if you get the color scheme wrong, because if you're if you are giving me some examples, some proof from the artwork, then that shows me that you're thinking about it and you are understanding um, how to use those details. So don't think that if you got the color scheme wrong that you totally missed it. That was only part of it. OK, um, I'm looking for those details from the artwork to support your opinion. Now, in this particular question, do the artist cho color choices make sense for the scene? You're going to think about what's going on here just like we just did. Do the colors used seem to fit the scene? And we talked about it's a night scene. This is inviting. So explain why or why not using textual evidence. I know that you guys are learning about textual evidence in language arts. This is kind of the same thing. Even though ours isn't textual, it's artistic. Um, so we're pulling from an artwork. So use those use those examples from the artwork. Use that, um, you know, talking about the warmth of the light from the cafe drawing you in. Um, use the darkness of the blue for the to to identify this as a dark night. Um, use those things as your specific examples. Okay. Now I wanted to share some um, some examples of. 
how students did a really good job of now all of these weren't used in one particular paragraph I'm going to take some pieces and put them together to make one really awesome paragraph but some of you guys did a really good job so kudos to the to those of you who did you followed the instructions okay so the first thing that I wanted to share was um, introducing the artist title and main idea or in other words giving your topic sentence okay that's what needs to happen in your topic sentence so in this example in the painting care um, cafe terrace at night by Vincent Van Gogh I feel as if he used a warm color scheme on the cafe now here the 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 person hasn't chosen the correct color scheme but this introduction is perfect because they named the title of the artwork even though night needs to be capitalized <laughs> because it is part of the title um, and they have named the artist okay and they have told us the topic sentence which is the color scheme that's used in this painting here's another example Vincent van Gogh used complementary colors in his painting titled cafe terrace at night here we have the artist here we have the title of the artwork and here we have named our uh, color scheme which is what this entire paragraph is about so that that's a wonderful topic sentence here's another one the artist Vincent van Gogh used primary colors in his painting cafe terrace at night now again we've they haven't chosen the correct color scheme but this introduction is wonderful because we've named the artist we've named the title and we have given the main idea which is the color scheme in the painting and then here's one more the artist Vincent van Gogh used warm colors as his color scheme in the painting cafe terrace at night okay so again um, we have the artist we have the title and we have the main idea which is the color scheme that's used those are some good examples um, I had some really bad examples I will have to tell you but um, these were some of the some of the best now let's look at and I want to go through I'm just gonna read through these and talk really briefly because I don't want this video to go on forever and I'm gonna be finished by 20 minutes if at all possible the body of the paragraph remember is where you're giving those details okay so these are some examples from um, from student submissions their responses that I thought were really awesome so I just wanted to share some of these with you okay so these are these don't go together these are just individual little pieces little snippets all right so the first example here also the cobblestones in front with the small arches of orange and blue gives movement and life in the cafe and it makes sense to me okay so they've they've included in their part of our question does it make sense yes it makes sense to me okay look at the next one I think his color scheme is appropriate for an actual cafe at night because for the cafe he used warmer tones which represent a warmer feeling inside and cool tones he used for the night sky isn't that such a nice way to put that the the example from the art um, this person has used the warmer tones and talked about the cafe and, and being warmer and having a warmer feeling inside and then the cool tones are used for the night sky look at the next one Van Gogh's color scheme makes sense for this scene because at night you normally see darker colors and the lights from the stores or cafe in this case draw you in with the hopes of being warm Wow that's like such a cool not only does it is it good detail but it's like part of a story it just could be like the beginning of a story I love it okay and then the next one I feel Van Gogh's color choices make sense for the scene there we go we've pulled in that the tag from our question we've pulled in part of the question and we give specific answer okay for I feel Van Gogh's color choices make sense for the scene because the scene looks as if it were cold outside and yellow and orange make it seem to be warm and the cafe at night being warm is perfect with the cool night and then the next one my first reaction here again we've pulled in a part of the question to help us answer that love it excellent job my first reaction to this was not only how good the colors look next to each other but also how the colors fit the theme of the painting this person has actually answered both questions at the same time really cool I believe the colors mostly blues show the theme of nighttime the oranges also show lights in the night and then finally wrapping it up using a closing sentence remember we're talking about a paragraph that stands by itself so it needs a topic sentence that introduces the main idea 
it needs body, several sentences in the middle that give details and support that main idea. And then it needs a closing sentence to kind of let the reader know, hey, I'm finished without saying, hey, I'm finished. <laughs> um, you want to do it in a neat literary way. So these are some examples. Instead of using any color he would like, Vincent van Gogh used complementary colors. Now that one's really simple, but it works. It's, it's perfectly fine. The next one, if Van Gogh had used another color scheme, it would have been less realistic than it is now. I love it. We're, we're moving on. We're letting um, the reader know that, hey, we're finished talking about the color scheme in this. And then the last one, overall, I think that the painting is amazing and the colors really help it come together. Those are some good examples. I hope those are beneficial. Now, I want to share before we end, I want to share a sample paragraph and, and kind of quickly go through. The one, the two, and the three are showing you where the, the author has answered, um, author of this paragraph has answered those questions. Okay, remember the questions way back from the beginning. Um, what is the color scheme that's been used? What's your reaction to the color scheme and, and the theme of the painting? And then do his color choices make sense? So all three of those questions have been answered in this paragraph. We start with a topic sentence that names the, the author and the title and the main idea. We have, body de uh, we have details in the body that um, come from the artwork. And then we have a concluding sentence. I'm just going to read through it and then we'll close. Vincent van Gogh used complementary colors in his painting titled Cafe Terrace at Night. My first reaction to this was not only how good the colors looked next to each other, but also how the colors fit the theme of the painting. I believe the colors, mostly blues, show the theme of nighttime. The oranges also show lights in the night. Also, the cobblestones in the front with small arches of orange and blue give movement and life in the cafe. Van Gogh's color choices make sense for this scene because at night you normally see darker colors and the lights from the stores or in the cafe, or cafe in this case, draw you in with the hopes of being warm. Overall, I think that the painting is amazing and that the colors really help it come together. Hopefully this was helpful, you guys. Um, I really appreciate your attention. Um, please keep this in mind. Refer back to it. You might even want to take some notes um, and just keep it in mind next time you do an art response. 